Hello everyone. Today I want to share with you this GPT generative pre-trained transformer that I created using ChatGPT4. The idea behind this GPT was really to try and help my teachers cut down some preparation time whenever they wanted to teach a lesson that was language based, so grammar or vocabulary or functional language. So I'm going to show you how I basically created this GBT and see how it works. So we're here on ChatGPT. Uh, this is my GPT. So looking at here, I'm just going to edit it so that I can show you the different steps. So basically you have two possibilities. You can either create or configure. In this case, I have created it already. So I'm just going to configure it. And I want to tell you how I went about. Basically, I gave it a name, which you can see here. So it's a lesson plan for an 85 minute lesson following a guided discovery and an introduction, a description, basically, which is what you can see here on the right. This GPT will help you quickly plan language lessons, so grammar, vocabulary, functional language following a clear and coherent guided discovery lesson framework. Here are the instructions. So for example, I said you will receive instructions in the form of a sentence illustrating the learning outcomes or objectives of the lesson. So this is what the teacher will have to add whenever they start using the chat, the GPT. You will need to produce a lesson plan that matches the learning outcomes received. The lesson plan must follow a guided discovery lesson framework and must include the following stages. So here I'm telling the GPT what are the stages that I want and lesson plan that is going to create using my instructions. So I want it to have a leading and I'm defining what that leading is and how long it takes so that it can use that information to be more accurate in terms of the instructions. So remember in the other videos that I shared on language prompts, it is very important that we are very, very specific. So leading maximum two minutes to show a picture, sound, object, etc. Then a warmer maximum three minutes for students to do a task as a result of the leading. So for example, usually a discussion via one two or three questions about the context set by the leading. Then pre-teaching vocabulary, so maximum five minutes if necessary. And this if necessary is because all the language included may not need to be pre-taught. This is something that there's a little bit of a debate about whether we pre-teach vocabulary or not. But sometimes it's necessary if there are too many words that they don't know in the listening or the reading. I'm using a listening or a reading usually to set the context uh, for the students to see the language embedded there, the target language being embedded there. So I tend to I tend to look at the text and then see whether it is necessary or not. And then I make that decision. So I've included it here for that reason. Some people say, well, maybe the pre-teaching vocabulary could be done after the listening for GIST. And I totally agree. It's, it's a matter of, of choice and a matter of when you want to do it and whether the conditions require pre-teaching vocabulary, basically. So it's not completely rigid and that's my rationale. Then listening or reading for GIST, three to five minutes. And then the guided discovery stage, 15 to 20 minutes with subsections, which include meaning, form, and pronunciation. Then a control practice stage, maximum 20 minutes, a freer practice stage, maximum 20 minutes, and then a feedback stage of about five to 10 minutes. For the meaning section, have a task where students have to classify or divide the target language items, or in this particular example that I'm using, eight phrases into what they hear in the situation and what they say in the situation if dealing with functional language. I'm using a functional language lesson on how to order food in the restaurant as an example, and I'll give you more details in a minute. Let's finish with the instructions. For example, number one, are you ready to order? This is a fixed expression and it is not broken down into individual elements as this is usually asked in most restaurant situations. Example number two, I'll have the X with X. So for example, I'll have 
the chicken soup with fries on the side, where the expression is semi-fixed and only the X can be replaced by different items. Here, focus on the part of speech of these items. They're usually nouns. For example, I'll have the fish or the rice or the salad, etc. For the pronunciation stage, for this specific example, focus on sentence stress, intonation, and connected speech. For example, yes, no questions have rice and intonation, as in, are you ready to order? Statements and WH questions, including how questions, have fallen intonation. For example, how would you like the steak? Questions offering options have rice fallen intonation. For example, would you like the fish or the pizza? For other language items, for example, verbs, nouns, adjectives, and the like, also focus on word stress pronunciation and, where appropriate, on sentence stress and connected speech. I'm writing this extra information in the instructions because this is a, the example I'm using to train the transformer is a functions lesson, but we could do the same with uh, grammar and vocabulary. Uh, if that was the main aim of the lesson. Then I say produce the lesson plan following this example and use the same format. Produce one lesson plan for an 85-minute lesson. This is what I have here and is 85-minute lessons because, as I said in my Facebook post, it is the length of the lessons where I currently work. There, we also have 55-minute lessons and I also create another one, but for this video, we're looking at the 85-minute lesson. Suggest three activities for the teacher to choose from for control practice of the target language where the answers are predictable and common sense. For example, written exercises which require the students to use the target language. For example, I got fill, dialogue writing with prompts, etc. It's really useful to always give an example to the generative pre-trained transformer GPT suggest three activities for the teacher to choose from for freer practice or of the target language where the answers require the students to use their creativity to use the target language but the context and parameters are clear for example they write a role play their own dialogue they create a quiz for other students etc use this example from the internet is an article from IH world on guided discovery so use that also as information for reference and also globalcognition.org guided discovery also for reference so that it is not all coming from me and there's also coming from reliable sources. Then those are the instructions, the conversation starters that are possible for someone using the GPT for the first time. So what happens in each stage of a guided discovery lesson? And so if you click there, it will tell you pretty much what happens. So if there's a, a new teacher who is not very familiar with guided discovery, they will be able to see what happens there. Also create a guided discovery lesson plan to teach jobs at elementary level. So this is also an example lesson plan for this specific content so that whoever is using it can actually see what it looks like if they're just checking things out, they wanna see what it looks like and not necessarily just going and creating a lesson plan or at least see what the prompt looks like. And also tell me more about guided discovery lesson framework. So it's three different conversation starters that would help anyone using the GPT. Now, something that is really useful and is that, for example, in knowledge, it says if you upload files under knowledge conversations with chat with, with GPT may include file contents. Files can be downloaded when code interpreter is needed. So what files did I include? I included here a PDF on Mayer's Three Strikes, which talks about also guided discovery. My guided discovery planning template, the one that I use with my trainee teachers on CELTA courses and share with my teachers whenever they are interested. I also included my the function lessons materials I created for the GPT to see as an example of what is a typical controlled practice exercise, a typical free of practice exercise, how I introduced the initial guided discovery stage. So there's a basically a, word, a handout there where they have to classify different things as an example. Plus guided discovery ordering food lesson plan information so that the GPT can go and look at all those internet resources and the materials that I gave it, that I uploaded to go and say, okay, well, all of this is what it looks like. These are the instructions and this is what happens. Great. So let's close this one over here and let's see what it looks like. Okay. So I'm just going to say, create a guided discovery lesson plan to teach jobs at elementary level. Let's say I'm a new teacher and I don't really know what it should be. So 
I'm going to add my learning outcomes. But before I do that, I want to see what it looks like. So if I click on it, it will give us basically following that format. And this is what I really like because it is a template. It is something to help the teacher. It's not that they need to grab this and then go to the classroom and teach this lesson. I think they could, but I would probably just go like, oh, I see. Okay. Now it all, it's a lot clearer. I can see the stages. I can see suggested activities that I can use for the different stages. So for example, the target language could be, what do you do? What's your job? I'm mm, plus a job title. Where do you work? I work in at plus the place. So this is some of the target language and then a possible target language. And then you have the, the leading in the different stages, which I think is really good because it can give the, especially new teachers or even experienced teachers, an idea, faster idea of what the different stages are and what we need to do or could do. So for example, the leading show a picture, display uh, a picture, display a collage of various job related images as what do you see in the pictures, set the context and activate prior knowledge of common jobs. This would also be a diagnostic activity. What is it that the students can see? What words they know already? And so this would be very useful for, for me as a teacher. In the warmer discuss, discussion questions, so what job would you like to do in the future? Does anyone in your family have an interesting job? What is a job that you think is difficult? And then whole class, they can share answers. We can see them or any emergent language, make notes of what they know or are missing or need to know so that we can address it. Then pre-teaching vocabulary for the listening gist. So who teaches students? It, this will depend on the listening that you have. You may have already a listening in the course book that you're using, or maybe you have created your own listening. I like creating my own listenings uh, with other teachers, recording them and then using them in class so that there's some an element of connection with the students. I like to include things that they have said or things I have said in class so that they can relate to it. Then the listening for gist again. So some pre-listening questions. What the question would be like, what jobs do you think you will hear? So that there's a prediction task that is very useful. They write them down and as they listen, they cross them off their list. Then the guided discovery. So the meaning, they remember the instructions we gave. So the task provider worksheet with the dialogue. So it is suggesting what to do. Here in this case, it's a dialogue. What do you do? I'm a teacher. I work in a school. It's a very simple dialogue. We can expand it. This is just a suggestion. Categorize what you hear and what you say. What do you do? What are your working hours? In this case, it's focusing more on the functions or the questions that we ask. It also suggests some CCQs. What job does person B have? Where does he or she work, does he or she. More than concept checking questions, these are more like comprehension checking questions. Then there's the form, focus on the structure. I'm a job title, focusing on a plus singular count nouns, and then some questions. There's the next stage, also focusing on pronunciation, the rise intonation questions and full intonation for statements that we mentioned in the instructions. Then control practice. There's a gap fill. Obviously we can change it. This is just an example. There's also dialogue writing or matching exercise. So I think the, the idea is that having three suggestions, it should be easier to decide thinking of my students. Okay. I think this exercise might be good or this might be better than the other one. Or in the end, I may say, well, I'll just do something different. For your practice, then you have either a role play or a job fair activity or a group discussion, which I think they're, they're nice and possible activities and then feedback. And then it says this lesson plan provides a structured way for elementary students to learn about jobs using guided discovery. Now, something I realized just now is that because the instructions are more about a functional language lesson than the jobs here were really left out and the focus was more on a functional language, which is good. So what I need to do now is go and create another GPT that focuses only on grammar or only on, voc on vocabulary with slightly different instructions. Okay. Well, I hope this was useful. It was just, I'm experimenting and trying to see how I can help my teachers and provide them with some extra resources. And in this case, how to help them cut down prep time by having a, a GPT that can make suggestions about what they can do in class if they're interested in a guided discovery lesson. Let me know what you think and give us a like if you like the, the video. And also let me know what you think in the comments. I would be really interested to see what you think and whether you would like to use it. I'm going to add the link to the GPT to the description and you can use it and then 
let me know what you think. Okay. I'll come up with more videos as soon as I continue to experiment with these GPTs, which I think are a really cool way of experimenting with AI and also finding ways of working more effectively and maybe cutting down on prep time for my teachers. And little by little, I think we'll get there at some stage. Thank you and bye for now. Well, we've come to the end, but I'll be sharing more exciting videos, so stay tuned and subscribe. Do let me know in the comments box if you have any special requests and I'll try to make a video about them. That would be exciting, don't you think? I'll make sure I'll give you a shout in the video. Do share this video with your friends and can I ask you a favor? Hit the like button so that more people can see this video. Bye for now and remember, learning is fun and you don't have to do it alone. So let's learn together with Robert.